I'll now provide an overview of the lifecycle management product. First, I'll frame the problem. As many of you know, granting access is pretty painful. You oftentimes have to deal with internal employees as well as external contractors who get access to different things with different access rights. Different groups oversee these users um, and they control their life cycles in different ways. For instance, your employees might be in your HR system, which provides a pretty easy way to manage life cycles. But external contractors oftentimes are not in your HR systems. So how do you deal with their, their life cycles? Additionally, these different groups um, use devices that aren't the same. Your internal employees might be entitled to uh, use their own devices from home as well as corporate owned devices, but your contractors uh, perhaps might only use um, devices that they bring from outside. So how do you get a handle on all of this? Our overarching goal is to ensure that all users have the right access to the right resources for the right amount of time. But there are many challenges that make this difficult. All companies have different processes for onboarding and offboarding users, and a one-size-fits-all solution never works. Decision makers are frequently not in IT. They might be business app owners, or they might be uh, sponsors for contractors. Lots of manual decisions have to be made, and oftentimes fulfillment of accounts cannot be done automatically. They must be done manually. And the products that worked in the past for instance, identity governance and administration don't provide the provisioning capabilities at scale to today's cloud solutions. To achieve our goal, our vision is to tie all users to a policy-based access lifecycle. In step one, we want to source that identity. Whether it's an employee or a contractor, we need to be able to get the data to create that account. In step two, we want to assign the resources at the right time. You've got the notion of birthright access, which is applications that everyone should get. And then you also have a separate set of applications that you might get on a request basis. In step three, you have to determine when the account will get suspended. If you're a contractor, your account might get suspended at the end of your contract, or it might get suspended after maybe 30, 60, 90 days of inactivity. If you're an employee, maybe your account gets suspended when HR says, it should be suspended. In step four, you might want to renew access, especially for contractors. How do you do that? Do you have a manager who attests to your contract date or do you want this to be automated? In step five, you need to have a clean process for offboarding users, whether internal, internal employees or contractors. This might be based off of a specific date or this might be based off of a trigger from your HR system or maybe even a directory. Okta's vision is to connect lifecycle to everything. So what you're looking at is a typical path of an account lifecycle at the bottom, from creation to offboarding. At each step, Okta needs to fulfill a process via one of the mechanisms or technologies shown up above in gray. For instance, when you're provisioning an account, you need to send account information, entitlements, and group information. And something up above, maybe the Okta integration network provides the connectors to get that done. In the active state, especially if you're a contractor, you might need to have your access regularly reviewed. Therefore, Okta can then pull records about who has access to what from the um, capabilities up above. And finally, when you offboard a user, right? You might have to reach out to an on-prem app to send over a message to deprovision an account. So the lifecycle management product has quite a few capabilities. At a high level, it includes onboarding and offboarding workflows for employees as well as non-employees. It can also provision to applications and also deprovision from those same applications. We also have delegation capabilities. So after day one, when someone gets the initial set of resources from IT uh, and they want to access additional apps, they can make the right requests, which gets sent to the right people. And we have reporting capabilities. So if you need to provide reports to security or run uh, some sort of audits, you can get the information about who has access to various applications. And we have lifecycle automations. So if our technologies for onboarding and offboarding users needs to be maybe enhanced or extended, you can do that with automation.